So thank you all for the session. And it's been terrific progress within ACSP to look at international, international issues. Um, so just really quick. So our program has a lot of international students. At any given time, we may have um, between a quarter to a half of our master's students being international. Even uh, with uh, this global outlook of the program, we have a lot of challenges. So I would like to share with you some of these challenges. And also just uh, as an international student myself many decades ago, uh, some of my own experience. And so my presentation is a little bit about how we actually get to do all the great things that the previous presenters have you know, um, uh, told us. Um, <clears throat> So the Global Task Force has really uh, identified, you know, just uh, to have students bring to the classrooms can be an important way to broaden our curriculum, right? So the students' experience is really important. But as we all know, there's a lot of discomfort. And just, you know, as I so I'm speaking also uh, on behalf of a very large number of adjunct faculty in our program. And so working with the different cultures and cultural differences. And this past year, right, the pandemic and then Black Lives Matters all add to the complexity, right? And the online education, and then the kind of what we call the, um, the lack of understanding of many international students of what really was going on in the United States. And as Farinak was also saying, knowledge is marked by power relations. And so how do we deal with all of that? I don't have, you know, great answers. I just want to share with you my experience. And then, you know, because of the large number of international students we have, particularly um, many from one single country, China, and they form these social cl uh, cliques and isolation. How do you really work with that? And so I just uh, have a few things to share with you. And, but the class dynamic really changes, meaning the classroom dynamic really changes uh, with the large number of international students. We are also getting more and more uh, applicants from Africa, from other uh, Middle Eastern countries. And so we're seeing the classroom really as a microcosm of the world. And so, um, so I wanted to share that experience. And I think first um, is to be honest and confront that discomfort that recognize the knowledge is co-created and context-based and welcome student sharing of prior experience. Even with a lot of uh, global expertise in our faculty, we recognize we, can't, we cannot cover um, many of the fronts. And so we've taken an approach that we don't try to specialize in regions, right? We try to really recognize that discomfort. So, and whenever possible, we even try to use in the uh, core curriculum, some broadly uh, comparative approach. And so allow students to bring in their home experience. It's very tough. So the last session had this terrific presentation of doing comparative work right, a land use law. That's difficult for many planning programs. You simply don't have the expertise. And students come from many different countries and their understanding of US planning law can be really hindered by a number of factors. So this is just an example of something um, that could be used in the planning law class to allow students from different countries to do a comparative kind of uh, assignment and assessment. And uh, of course, um, and to allow students to really introduce those experiences to share with other students. And so um, that's sort of one thing we've been doing and not very even. Some faculty, especially uh, with discomfort, still have resistance to that. So we're taking it very slow. And then secondly, as I mentioned, we try not to say we have courses on China, have courses on Africa. We, we simply couldn't do that. And we also to really try to introduce global uh, throughout the curriculum. We do have a concentration on international development and planning, but I think the core um, uh, framework we use is to really try to bring the global North and South in conversation. That is not to uh, basically um, pigeonhole different country experiences 
um, in different parts. Um, so for instance, when we looked at some land property issues, and this is very much based on the work um, Raquel Alterman has done that really try to look at how land ownership um, and then compensation for development refusals uh, are really situated in the political context and uh, uh, social economic traditions of different countries, really bring them together uh, to look at um, you know, leasehold versus free, freehold and then different types of uh, leaseholds across different countries. So that's a one way to introduce um, a global component and this broadly comparative framework in, um, into the curriculum. So I don't think we have a very systematic approach yet to say, you know, we cover all fronts, um, but we try as you know, much as we can to introduce to both core courses and elective courses. And uh, one of the key challenges uh, with international students has a lot to do with the sort of traditional classroom practice within American universities. You know, we very much value class participation. Uh, we, you know, many of my adjunct colleagues would, you know, count 20% of their grades for class participation. The pandemic has really brought that to a very boiling point. You know, many international students don't speak up, even in person let alone online. I still remember when I was a graduate student for the very first year, I didn't raise a single question in classroom because they have discomfort. And so I think what we're trying to do, I've been really working with our faculty to allow non-native speakers the space and time to prepare for participation and to recognize there is power relations within uh, the classroom and there are hierarchies within the classroom. So this is something I like to introduce to all of you. Wei um, Ping, if you could wrap up. Yeah, there's one last, one more sec. So this is a social e-reader that allows students to raise questions to readings and then uh, help each other beyond classroom. So last but not least is this social e-reader that we've been using, a number of our faculty now have been using and really so students have more support outside of the classroom and students also can help each other beyond the classroom. So those are just the few things that we've been doing in our program to really get international students to feel more part of the large community and to share their experiences. Thanks.